Hi, welcome to the Visplor Video Academy. This video shows you how to import data frames from your Python environment to Visplor. And also how you get information from Visplor back to Python, like data labels or selections of data subsets. After starting Visplor, when you select your data source, select Connect to Python. This gives you a small code snippet for Python to connect it with this instance of Visplor. When you do this for the first time, make sure this checkbox here is checked. This will install the Visplor API package for Python. The next time you connect, you don't need to check it again. Press copy to clipboard and close. Now Visplor waits for Python until you connect. So open your Python environment. It can be Jupyter Notebook, Spider, or any other shell or console. Now paste the snippet from the clipboard and run it. The API package is installed and now the tools are connected. So you have this variable visplor here, which serves as a handle, which you can use to talk to visplor. And by the way, this import visplor pi here is important because it loads the API and it is necessary before you do anything with visplor in Python. So for demonstration, I'm doing a side-by-side -side view of Python on the left and Visplor on the right. Now let's send a data frame over. You can use any pandas data frame of yours. Um, I will load a data frame from a CSV file here. This is actually a demo data set shipped with Visplor. It's about 200 time series from solar power production and weather in a 10 minute raster. So let's send this data frame to Visplor using the send data command. You get some progress information and then the data has arrived, 23,000 records. Now let's start an analysis cockpit to explore that data. Visplor suggests trends and distributions. Okay, and we're there. So after just a few seconds, you are ready to explore your Pandas data frames. So say we explore some temperature time series. And we discover some outliers here. So let's make Visplor full screen. Visplor supports selecting these outliers with the left mouse button very easily and then cleaning them with just one click. For example, by using linear interpolation as it's rather short periods. All right, and they're gone. And now it's just one more line of code from Python to get the clean data table back. So let's go back to the side-by-side -side view. Use visplor get data and put the result in some variable. This sends the whole data table from Visplor back to Python, including all the edits that we have made. Data frame is here. Let's look at the time series that we have just edited. Um, so it's temperature outdoor. We don't have to type the name though. There is a command here, get selected columns, which we can use to retrieve the names of the columns that are currently selected in Visplor. And then we can use this just in the code. For example, plot that particular time series here. And you see that the drops to zero are gone here as well, like in Visplor. Another important application of Visplor is interactive labeling of data. For example, labeling some anomalies or labeling useful training data for training a machine learning model. So let's make Visplor full screen again and say we want to model the power generation. So let's go for power. And when we look at this apparent power time series, for example, we see that it has a structural break here. From here on, the peaks are not as high and the variance looks also different. So for training a model, we should not treat both periods in the same way, right? So for now, 
Let's just select the more recent period as training data. Let's switch the selection mode here to a time interval. And then use the left mouse button to select the more recent period. And then we can give it a name and name this condition training data. Okay. So now we have labeled that particular data training data. This labels all the selected records and from Python, we can retrieve this condition just by typing get condition with the name of the labeling that we just made. So this condition training data can be retrieved here. And once we plot it, we see it's exactly that labeled data. Now we could use these labels to train a model in Python based on the meaningful data subset. Finally, we want to compute some new variables in Python and include them in the Visplora analysis. Because often you discover only during the exploration that you need more computed data. And as the tools are linked, you can just do that. So let's compute a smoothing of a time series. This is simple. You could do any computation with any package, but for demonstration, smoothing will do. So let's go back to the temperatures here. and say we want to do a smoothing of this temperature time series. So in Python, we can use the rolling function to compute the smoothing of the selected column here in Visplor. Then we give this new column a name, temperature smoothed, and then we send it back to Visplor with send data and the mode set to merge. Now run this cell, the cockpit updates, and now look at the smoothed and the original time series together. Let's zoom in a bit. Now, say we are not satisfied with the parameters and the smoothing is too strong. So let's lock the view because when we update the parameters, we see immediately this part of the data again. And then we can just, for example, adjust the parameter to 20. Let's make a not so strong smoothing run this again and when i do this please focus here on the time series and see how it updates immediately this visual feedback is very useful for parameter tuning now as a remark um, you can also create new attributes directly in visplor without the need of sending data back and forth there is a python based formula editor built into the software that you find here you click new data attribute there is another video about feature engineering to learn more about that. Now back to the Python API, um, there are many more commands that you can use. For example, if you type help visplore pi, you get a list documentation of the whole API with all the commands that you can use. And I will show you just two more small examples. So one would, for example, be retrieving the contents of a visualization in Visplor as a data table. So for example, let's run this one, statistics. It would retrieve the view called statistics in Visplor as a new data frame. Or another example is the start Visplor command to start a new Visplor instance from Python at any time. I run this and you see here, how the new Visplor instance has opened up. So looking at the Python code, you see that you can work with multiple Visplor instances at the same time using different handle variables. So let's summarize. We learned how to use Python as a data source for Visplor and how to use Visplor and Python side by side for a workflow of data exploration and preparation. Further use cases would be using Python as a bridge to other data sources. For example, using any Python package to connect to different data sources and to merge data from different sources, because from there, it's just one more line of code to have that merged data in Visplor. So you can basically write your own importers. And another use case would be automation. You can build your data pipeline in Python, send the data to Visplor, and then use the API to automatically export visualizations, for example, for a regular report. This concludes the video. 
For R and MATLAB, the same type of integration exists. So have fun trying it out on your own.